Okay, today I'm going to be taking you through the art of making one of the most dainty cookies you will probably ever come across. Yes, we are talking about macarons. From achieving the perfect macronage to mastering the art of piping perfectly sized cookies, I'll be taking you through the process step by step so that you can make beautiful macarons right at home. So we're going to start off by preparing our baking trays. So all you have to do is line two large baking trays with parchment paper, making sure that the parchment paper is nice and flat and doesn't hang over the edges. Now to pipe the macarons, you can either eyeball them or you can use a template. So I'm just using two inch templates. You can download and print similar ones to these from my blog at cakesbymk.com. And I'm just placing the templates under the parchment paper so that it's all ready for piping later on. Now you just wanna set these trays aside for now. And next we're going to move on to the batter. Now, before you start on the batter, you wanna make sure that you have one of these, a digital kitchen scale. Precision is so, so important when it comes to making macarons and so you really want to make sure that you're weighing your ingredients. So first we're going to need 100 grams of room temperature egg whites which is the whites from about three large eggs. So I'm just starting off by separating the yolks and whites from three eggs and then weighing the egg whites to make sure that I have the exact amount that I need. Okay, now once that's done, you just want to set your egg whites aside for now. And next we're going to combine 140 grams or one and a half cups of almond flour and 120 grams or one cup of powdered sugar. Now I have added my dry ingredients to a food processor because I'm just going to process them just a little to ensure that everything's super fine. The finer your dry ingredients, the smoother the tops of your macarons will be. Now this step is optional, but I do recommend doing it if you have a food processor. So you just want to process the dry ingredients for about five seconds, give it a mix, and then do it for about another five seconds. You don't want to over process it, otherwise you're going to start to release the oils from the almonds, which we don't want. Now once that's done, we're going to sift our dry ingredients, and this is going to do two things. Firstly, it's going to aerate the dry ingredients, and secondly, it's going to make sure that we don't have any lumps or large pieces of almond flour. Once you get to the end, just use your hands to break up any lumps to help push through the remaining dry ingredients through the sieve. Now, if you have any large bits left at the end, it's usually just larger chunks of almond flour, so you can just discard this, but just make sure that if you're discarding a lot of it, then you know you're adding more almond flour in so that you don't throw off the balance of the ingredients in the batter. Now, you just wanna set your dry ingredients aside for now, and next we're going to move on to the meringue. So grab your egg whites from earlier and add them into a large mixing bowl and you also want to add in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Salt is going to help prevent you from over whipping your meringue and it's also going to add a bit of flavor. And then using a hand or stand mixer, mix on a medium speed for about 30 seconds until the eggs become foamy. If you use a stand mixer then you want to make sure that you're using the whisk attachment. Now once the eggs are foamy, begin gradually adding in 100 grams or half a cup of white granulated sugar. You want to add about a tablespoon at a time, mixing really well in between each addition. Now once all the sugar is added in, keep mixing until you reach stiff peaks. Now the texture of the meringue is super important when making macarons, so you want to make sure that you're not under or over mixing your meringue. You want to make sure that you have nice stiff peaks so that we have a strong meringue because the meringue is what provides structure to the macarons. So you know the meringue is ready when it becomes thick and glossy, holds its shape and leaves really visible tracks while mixing. You should be able to lift up the meringue and the peaks shouldn't fold over, instead they should stay upright and straight. Now once your meringue is done, this is the time to add in any flavorings or colors. So today we're just making simple vanilla macarons, so I'm adding in a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and then I'm also adding a few drops of red gel food coloring. Now you really want to make sure that you're using gel food colors and not liquid food coloring, otherwise you run the risk of making the batter a bit too runny. And then you basically just want to mix that in on a low speed until it's well combined. I'm just going to add in an extra drop or two just for a bit of a darker color. Now you just wanna get all of that meringue off of your attachments and then we're going to move on to the last step which is one of the most important parts of making the macaron batter and that is combining the dry ingredients with the meringue also known as the macaronage. So start off by adding in half of your dry ingredients into the meringue and using a spatula, gently fold the mixture in a J motion. So you wanna scrape the sides of the bowl and then cut through the middle of the batter. Once the dry ingredients are almost mixed in, add in the remaining dry ingredients and continue to fold in that same J motion. Now, once everything is combined, you wanna start pushing out some of those large air bubbles by using your spatula to 
press the batter up against the sides of the bowl. Now, as you continue to mix and scrape, you're going to notice the batter become a little bit more loose. And what we want is a thick and flowy batter that doesn't break easily. So you really wanna be careful not to over or under mix it, so keep checking the consistency often. Now, a helpful way to check if it's done is by lifting up the batter with your spatula and slowly creating a figure eight with it. If you can make the figure eight without the batter breaking, then it's ready. However, if the batter breaks before you're able to create that figure eight, then that means that you need to mix a little bit more. Another thing to check is if the batter is slowly sinking back into itself. So you want it to take kind of about 10 to 15 seconds of, you know, it kind of sinking back in and then you want it to stop. However, if it's not sinking back in at all, then it means that you just need to mix it a little bit more. Or if it sinks in, you know, too quickly and it just seems too liquidy, then unfortunately that means that the batter is overmixed. Okay, so our macaron batter is looking good and now you wanna pop this into a piping bag with a 1A large round tip on it. Now, because macaron batter is a little runny, the easiest way to do this is to twist the bottom of your piping bag with the tip on it, place it into a large glass or jug, fold the top of the piping bag over the top edge and then fill the middle with the batter. Once that's done, lift the piping bag out, twist the top and then slowly push the batter towards the opening and then you're ready to pipe. Now, when piping macarons, you want to make sure that you're piping perpendicular to the tray so that you have some nice, even macarons. Now, before I start piping, I'm also just putting some spoons on the ends to stop the parchment paper from moving. So because macarons will spread out a little, you want to pipe them slightly smaller than the size that you want. So I'm just going to pipe mine slightly smaller than two inches. So to do this, you just want to apply a little bit of pressure and then once you're done, release the pressure and do a little twist following the shape of a C to break the batter so that you can move on to the next macaron. Now, when you first pipe the macaron, there will be a little dip at the top, but this will eventually sink into the batter, especially when we come to tapping the tray, which is the next step. So once all the macarons are piped, you want to carefully remove the templates if you've decided to use them. And then next, you want to drop the trays onto the counter and then also tap the bottom of the trays with your hand. This is just going to help smooth out the tops of the macarons and push any large air bubbles to the top, which you can then go ahead and pop with a toothpick or knife. So once you're going ahead and popping these large air bubbles that have come to the top, there will be a little hole once you've kind of popped the bubbles. So just use a little of the surrounding batter to fill in that hole. Okay, now the hard part is done and now you just want to let these macarons dry out for about half an hour to an hour before we go ahead and bake them. Now what you want is for a little skin to develop on the top of your macarons so that when you go to touch the tops, no batter sticks to your fingers. Now this is probably the most crucial step when it comes to making macarons if you want them to have those, you know, signature little feet on the bottom. By giving the macarons a little bit of time to develop that skin, it means that while they're baking, the trapped air is going to escape from the bottom which gives us that little feet. So if you don't let these dry long enough, then you're going to end up with cracked, you know, macaron shells. Now about 20 minutes into the drying time of the macarons, this is a good time to go and preheat your oven to 150 C or 300 F. This is the temperature with no fan, so not on convection mode. So about 45 minutes later, the tops of my macarons have formed a little skin on them. So when I touch the tops, none of the batter sticks to my fingers, which means that they are now ready to bake. Now for more even and consistent baking, you wanna bake one tray at a time in the middle rack of your oven. And you wanna bake it at 150 C or 300 F as mentioned earlier for around 18 to 20 minutes. Now just keep in mind that if you are making slightly smaller macarons, then the baking time will be slightly reduced. So you might wanna check it a few minutes earlier. Now to check if the macarons are done, gently move the tops and if they wiggle around a little then that means that they need a bit more baking. I will check every minute or so after I've done that first initial check and then once you wiggle the top and they don't move around then they're ready to take out. So my macarons are done baking now, they have those cute little macaron feet and now you just want to let these completely cool before gently peeling them away from the parchment paper. Ideally they should peel away easily with little to no residue left behind, however if you do kind of lift them up and they have you know big chunks which are stuck to the parchment paper, that unfortunately means that the macarons are underbaked. Okay, so now that the macarons are done, we can go ahead and make our filling. So you can fill macarons with 
so many different things. You could use a buttercream, a ganache, a jam, a curd, but today I'm just keeping it simple and I'm going with a not too sweet American buttercream. So it's really simple to make. All you have to do is to a bowl, add in 170 grams or three quarters of a cup of room temperature unsalted butter, 187 grams or one and a half cups of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract or essence, and 60 grams or a quarter cup of room temperature whipping or heavy cream. You just wanna mix that all in on a low speed and then once everything is combined well, turn up the speed to a medium high and mix for a full 10 minutes. You can totally do this with a stand mixer, which is what I usually do, but I just couldn't be bothered getting out my KitchenAid today. So by mixing the buttercream for a while, it's going to lighten up your buttercream and make it super fluffy. If you find that your buttercream is a little firm and you know, not quite as smooth as you want once you're done, it just means that one or more of your ingredients are too cold. So just heat it up really gently in the microwave or over a double boiler. Not too much though, otherwise it's going to turn into a soupy mess. And then you basically just wanna re-whip it and it should become nice and fluffy. Okay, so that is our buttercream all done. It's so easy and now we're gonna go ahead and fill our macarons. So I'm just popping my frosting into a piping bag with a 1A large round tip on it. The same one I used to pipe the macarons. And then I'm just going to get a macaron shell, pipe a little dollop of buttercream in the middle. Don't pipe too much. You do wanna have some space on the edges of the macaron shell. And then you just wanna get another macaron shell and gently push down on the buttercream. And this will just spread the buttercream out to the edges and then that is one macaron all done. And now you just want to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the remaining macarons. And that is our macarons all done. So I'm just going to pop them onto, you know, something a little bit nicer. Now you can go ahead and try one right away. You're probably tempted to do so. However, for the best taste and texture, it's best to pop these into an airtight container and let them rest in the fridge for about 24 to 48 hours before having them. This just allows the flavors to meld and for the shells to just soften up a bit and get that, you know, traditional macaron texture. By letting them set for a bit in the fridge as well, it's also going to firm up your filling so that when you go to take a bite it doesn't kind of all just you know come out the edges. I am going to try one now though because I've got a good excuse I need to do a taste test for the video. Oh it's so good. They're just so like decadent and you know such a treat to eat. The inside has that you know kind of soft but slightly chewy texture and then you've got that you know slightly firm top on there so you just have this like wonderful kind of mixture of textures going on. And this is going to taste even better tomorrow after it's, you know, had some time to sit in the fridge. Now for loads and loads of troubleshooting tips, you know, if you can't quite figure out why your macarons are not working, go ahead to my blog at cakesbymk.com onto my macaron blog post and you'll find heaps and heaps of information on there. Macarons are difficult cookies to make. There is absolutely no question about that. Even I get them wrong sometimes as well. So, you know, if you go ahead and try them out and, you know, they don't quite turn out how you'd hoped, don't give up. Keep trying it out, play around with different things like your oven temperature, how long you've let them rest, the consistency of your batter, the consistency of your meringue. There are so many things which go into making a macaron. So yeah, don't give up and you know, hopefully you will get there. So that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you decide to give this macaron recipe a go, then please do leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content out and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.